Thank you very much, dear colleagues, dear friends. I have a disclosure to make. I am very proud to be the new CMO at Aspetar. I am very proud to work together with you, selected sports medicine experts from all over the world, from 72 countries. I am very proud to be able to, together with you, fulfill the criteria of, for Aspetar to be a global leader. Um, we are facing some challenges at the moment, as you know. But I can assure you that the goal will be there. We will be a global leader. I would say our aim is even to be the global leader in one special area. We are aiming to be a the global leader in football medicine. The question, of course, is why football? Well, football is the biggest sport in the world. We are going to arrange the World Cup in 2022, and we are the best football country in Asia. So it's natural to choose uh, 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 football. So this is what I will try together with you to, uh, to um, uh, fulfill. Now, let me give you a background. I usually present myself as a football doctor. But let me give you a, lit a little background. When I was 10 years old, my father died suddenly. He was absolutely OK in the morning. I remember we played uh, before I went to school. But when I returned from school, he had passed away. However, he had already bought a birthday present for me two weeks later. It was a football. And from that moment on, the football became my dearest friend, my first love, and I really uh, enjoyed uh, playing football. Actually, I wanted to be a football player. I wanted to, uh, uh, to be a, a professional football player. And my absolute dream was to be selected for the Swedish national team in football. However, I was not good enough, so I decided to change focus. So I decided to be a football doctor instead. I wrote my PhD in 1982 about prevention of football injuries. This is really one of the papers there is the first paper where in a randomized study where it has been shown that it's possible to prevent sports injuries in total. If you're interested in that paper, just send me a mail and I, I still have a PDF file of that. And based on that, I was uh, selected actually for the Swedish national team as a doctor. And I even have a, a, a medal from a, a World Cup in football, a bronze medal, because Sweden was third in the World Cup in US 1994. Based on that, I was selected to be a member of the UEFA Medical Committee. And, and that was in 1992. And at the end of the 90s, UEFA decided to do something about all these football injuries. And they asked me to, to, uh, to um, uh, initiate studies of how to prevent football injuries. And as you know, the first step in preventing injuries is to do an injury study. So we launched the UEFA uh, Elite Club Injury Study in, 19, in 2001. And, and the thing is that UEFA invites the 32 teams that qualify for the World Cup, uh, for the uh, UEFA uh, ground play in, uh, in uh, Champions League. And teams that already have uh, been in the study are allowed to participate. So this is now the world's largest study. Uh, we have 55 clubs on 20 countries. We have 24,000 injuries in the study. Um, and all, as you can see here, all the best team in Europe participate in this study and send us data. But we have followers. The, the sec I, I think the second uh, largest 
database of football injuries is from here, from the QSL uh, study and from the AFC uh, study, thanks to the excellent work by my friend Karim Chamare Montas Taben. So you're really congratulated to be to be um, leading already in 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 this area. So the question is, why do Real Madrid and other teams send us data every month for 18 years? They don't do that to be nice to us. They do that because they get a lot of information back. We send them reports three times a, a season where they can see their own team in red here mm -hmm. compared with all the other teams. Of course, no names for the other teams. <coughs> But they can also see the development over a season. This is for different seasons from this team with, where they could see the, the difference in annual rates a season. And here you could see the mean for all teams. If you see things like this, sudden drop here for three years and a sudden increase for three years, I can tell you the secrets. This is almost always the change of manager, change of coach influences the injury situation a lot. Uh, the, the key for us in injury study is to, to present data that they could use on a uh, practical use on the sports field. They're not interested in publication in, in, in uh, scientific journals or so. They want information they can use on the sports field. So we, one thing which is key for us is player availability because the most um, um, common reason for unavailability is, as you know, injuries. So this is, for example, last season in Champions League. You see the, the uh, play availability at matches. You can see how the benchmark that we tell them should be 90%. You should aim, if you work with a club, to have 90% or more available at matches. <coughs> doesn't matter if it's amateur level or, or females or, or males. 90% is the goal you should aim for. You should see in Champions League last season, there were 10 teams that had over 90% availability at matches. And I can tell you, those were the successful teams. Here are some teams down here where had very disappointing seasons. Uh, why is this important with availability? Well, of course, it's natural. You need the players available to perform well. We have shown in our study clearly uh, that low injury rates is associated with improved performance in the leagues, but also international. Um, uh, Karim and Monte have shown the same in the, in the, in the QSL. So this is evident. You need a player available to perform. Performance is the only thing the coaches listen to. Uh, then we have the question, always, as you know, if an athlete is injured, there's always when can he and she play again? And of course, it's fantastic for the the uh, team doctors like Ian McGuinness here. Congratulations, Ian. Uh, to to be able to, to have a more precise answer to that, we have more precise answers because we have a database of 24,000 injuries. We know the ex that what ex uh, return the absence time for uh, almost all of the injuries. We can provide the mean, the median, the standard deviation, the minimum, the maximum, and the percentage of re injury, the risk of re injury. So everybody can read, and we'll just have an article about all those 24 injuries or the, uh, the 30 most common injuries sent to British Journal of Sports Medicine. So you will get tables where you can find these uh, figures. This is your duty as a if you're working in a team. You need to read the literature. You need to follow uh, to be aware of such uh, uh, figures. Uh, another reason for doing a study is that, that we, we have some injuries that are rare. Uh, ACL injuries is a trouble for us, but it is a rare injury. It's only it's less than 1%, it's only occurring one every second season in a team. If we go for the metatarsal five fractures, 
which is now very much discussed, not least here, it's every fourth season. You cannot, working in one team, get enough experience to have any knowledge, personal knowledge about these injuries. You need to collect data from many teams. So that's why we, we have collected from all these teams for almost 20 years. We have a database of 75 metatarsal fire fractures, so we know how to treat them to be successful. 150 ACL injuries. This is why we were, need to work together. Let me look at the most common injury. That's, as you know, hamstring injuries. If, and, and when it comes to hamstring injuries, it's very important to separate into severity. And the severity is normally by imaging. So uh, the, the, uh, normally the radiologists have four severity grades. Grade zero is with no pathology at all at uh, MRI or ultrasound. Grade one is edema but no tears. Grade two is partial rupture. Grade three is total rupture. If we look at the football field, it's two, the majority of hamstring injuries have, they don't have, they are not tears. Uh, and still they cause mo the majority of absence in a team. This means that if you look at hamstring injuries, you have quite a different view if you look at from the football field or from the hospital field. Because on the football field, the minor injuries are the trouble ones. They never reach the hospital. In the hospital, you collect these, uh, these uh, total ruptures and avulsions and so on. And, but they are, they are ve very rare. So sometimes people at hospital, they do not understand. They say mu muscle injuries is the same as a muscle tear. This is not the case on the football field. They very often, when I go to congresses, for example, I was the AFC Congress in China last week, and there was a guy talking about, uh, from a hospital, talking about surgery or how important it was to, to have a surgical technique for hamstring uh, uh, avulsions or tears. Now, during 20 years, in 30 clubs, we have had less than 10 such injuries. So when I get the question, uh, should we operate or not, I said, it's not a big problem. And these injuries are rare. Now, remember what I, when I was asked to do this injury study at the UEFA, the main mission was we want you to, start to do something so we reduce the injury risk. So we have been able to follow the injury risk over time. Have we been successful? No. And not during the first 12 years. The, the, the injuries, for the severe injuries, was the same. Uh, you can read this article, it's open access, so you can read the whole article. Uh, we usually use the injury burden, which is the number of absence days per thousand hours of exposure. There was some variation, but no difference in injuries. So this means that the, the traditional preventive method that we use in sports medicine and did not have any effect on elite level. And, 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 and even the, the hamstring seniors were increasing season by season. Of course, you could say the intensity of the play has increased, but still, it's increasing. We need to do something about this. Now, and so you could, you, 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 you could say all these preventive ankylis training, taping, core stability, muscle strength training, did not seem to have any effect and be sure that they are all aware of this in all uh, top clubs. So what we did was we gathered all these people, all the team doctors, all the 30 teams, we gathered them once a year, four days after the Champions League final. And we asked them in, in when we were in Porto season 2012 to 13, what are the most important factors to prevent injuries in elite level football. Think for a moment, what would you say? Um, um, my personal feeling was probably economy is important because if you're a good economy, you could have more doctors and more officers and that will be important. They didn't even mention economy. They mentioned four, 
four aspects of how they working 24 seven on the field, what they thought were important to prevent injuries on professional elite level, male elite level. These were the four factors. Leadership style of coaches, load on players, internal communication, and well-being of players. I was really surprised because this is in, 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 in any organization and any business. You're talking about the leadership style of the boss, the load on the, on the uh, um, employers. I mean, if you have too much to do, you get burned out. You're too little, you're understimulated and bored and internal communication, how do you communicate in a working place, and well-being of the employee, that is our uh, total life. Outside the working place, do you, do you have a good relation? Do you have any friends? Do you sleep at night, uh, et cetera? And, and obviously, the team doctors of Champions League team thought that this is important also for football players. Not only what they do on the pitch, but they need to devote their total life to being a real well-performing athlete. So we, we will be surprised because these things are very little studied. Uh, so we, d we decided to start studies on all those four aspects. We started with do looking at what is the leadership style of coaches? Is this associated with the injury situation? This is already published in British Journal of Sports Medicine. You can all read it in details. It clearly showed what I say, and I usually say the most important person for the injury situation in a professor fo football club is not the doctor, it's the coach. Are there any coaches here? Could you raise your hands? N no coaches. Are there any medical people here? Could you raise your hands? All of you. This is the problem. This message doesn't reach the coaches because the coaches don't go to medical meeting because we only talk about Latin and, and uh, ACL uh, surgery and uh, percentage of anchor sprains, which is not interested of them at all. We need to, uh, to, to translate medical information to performance and strategy raising. So this is, we don't meet. They don't know how important they are. They always refer to the doctor. Uh, what about load on players? Well, this is certainly a topic that is of great interest in all Champions League clubs. All the Champions League clubs in our study do load measurement. They measure the ex uh, external load by GPS measurements or no heart variability. They measure the internal load by RP. One of our members in our study group, Alan McCall, uh, we studied for, for uh, uh, two seasons in the Champions League. We measured the RP, rate of perceived exertion, the e the internal load, how the players experience the load, and found a correlation, which is studied in, in uh, Australian football by Gabbett and others also. But the, the data from our study uh, were, showed that it was not good enough to predict in yours. When I visit clubs, they usually say, listen, uh, Here's a hamstring injury. And if you look at the data um, uh, t uh, two months before, you could see that these and these variables were sort of reduced. Well, that's easy to, to backwards tell about an injury. But what you're really interested in is if these data could predict forwards. For example, if you have this and this uh, very, um, uh, data, you have a 30% risk, increased risk of a hamstring injury within the next month. That would be valuable. So far, we have not any data showing yet that um, a load measurement can predict in use. It might be very um, important in performance, but, but still not um, evidence for prevention of injuries. Internal communication shows again that the coach is as, uh, very important. It showed that the 
there is a correlation between the quality of communication and injuries. And especially if there was a low, a, a bad communication with, within, between the coach and the medical uh, manager. Look at these figures. If you have a low communication between the coach, the coaching team and the medical team, compared to those who had medium or high communication, it increases the injury burden with 50%. Severe injury risk with 73%. Decreases the attendance of training at matches. This is substantial. This is definitely the, the difference between success and success. I know of a Champions League team where they had a coach, a new coach from South America, who told the, head, the team doctor, I don't want to have any contact with you. You can have contact with me as with my assistant. It wasn't a successful season for them, I can tell you. So, we have published three, and we have one ready about well-being of players, showing that sleep quality is important for in your situation. They're all associated uh, factors here, but of course, we cannot say that those associations are causative. But certainly, it has opened at least my eyes to you need to, to think wider. I have a good information to you. We have studied the injury situation after 2013, and now it's decreasing. All the teams are aware of these factors. They have tried to work with it. They have discussed with their coaches. They have increased internal communication. The injury situation is, de um, is decreasing. So my m take home message is, if you want to prevent the injuries in professional football, you need to think out of the box. You need to think wider. It's not only giving the players a hamstring exercise. That's two simple solution. Uh, you need to think bigger. You, we need to work uh, together. So this is the way I hope we together can, can, uh, um, can work to, to be leaders in, in, um, in uh, football medicine. Can I ask a last question, uh, ask you who are on Twitter? Can you raise your hands? <coughs> One third. I will tell you others, this is an excellent way of keeping updated and, and uh, to what happens really. And, uh, and f I find it, I'm not on Facebook or anything, but I find it fantastic to be on Twitter. You should be young like me, you should be on Twitter. Thank you very much.